Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater. Starring Kirk Douglas, Patrice Wymore, and Joe Safford in Young Man with a Horn. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. If I were asked to name a phase of our life that was typically American, I would immediately answer jazz. Music that began in small cabarets in Dixieland and spread to the orchestras of the nation. In tonight's play, Young Man with a Horn, we bring you the outstanding Warner Brothers picture of a musician who played two kinds of music, one for his job and one for himself. And from the original cast, we have that dynamic actor, Kirk Douglas, co-starring with two talented young ladies, singing star Joe Stafford and lovely Patrice Wymore. In our story, the young man is fervently devoted to his music and his beloved horn. But most young men are fervently devoted to young ladies, particularly Lux girls. Lovely ladies who are devoted to Lux toilet soap for that fine beauty care that keeps their complexions softer, smoother, the Lux facial way. Now the curtain rises on Young Man with a Horn. Starring Kirk Douglas as Rick Martin, Patrice Wymore as Amy, and Joe Stafford as Joe Jordan. My name's Smoke. I play piano in a run-of-the-mill dance band. That's how I came to know Rick Martin. Rick is practically a legend now, so his story's worth telling it's a story of a lonely man. It begins in Los Angeles a long time ago with a ten-year-old kid hanging around the door of a third-rate nightclub. Customers had all gone home, and the band had started little jam sessions. They were Negroes, hard hazardness cotton pickers. Hold it, boys. Hold it. <laughs> Looks like we got an audience there in the doorway. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want, boy? Excuse me, I... I was just listening to the music. You like the way we play? Yes, sir. Kind of late for you to be out, isn't it? No school tomorrow. Oh, well, you better come on in then. Thank you. What's your name? Rick Martin. You sure your folks won't care, Mr. Martin? Well, there's just my sister. She wouldn't know if I came in or not. Oh, I see. You a musician, Mr. Martin? Well, I kind of play the piano a little. Taking lessons? No, sir. But there's a mission around the corner. After the services, when nobody's there, I go in and play the piano. That's fine, boy. That's good. But what I really want to learn is the trumpet, like you. You hear that, gentlemen? Oh. Mr. Martin knows talent when he hears it. Oh. Well, what are we waiting for? Have a chair, Mr. Martin. Sit down. day, Rick Martin got a job. Pin boy in a bowling alley. If he was going to be a trumpet player like Art Hazard, well, he'd have to buy a trumpet. Came from a pawn shop, and it cost him nine dollars. Now watch me, boy. Watch my lips and listen. <laughs> kid couldn't see anything but notes or hear anything but his trumpet. Yeah, Rick Martin was cut out to be a jazz man the way the righteous are chosen for the church. Now there, you see the difference? But what was I doing wrong? Too sharp on the high notes, and you're getting a roll. Once you get that roll, boy, it closes up your lips and chokes your throat. Now try it again. Just a minute. I almost forgot. Have a cigar, Mr. Hazard. It's a two-bit one. Well, shut me up if it isn't. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Thank you, sir. Well, a lot of years went by and Rick grew up. Now he was playing two ways. One way for money, what there was of it, and one way 
princess. You see, that was his way of talking. Hiya, Mr. Hazard. How am I doing? Sounds pretty good, Mr. Martin. Hey, you don't sound as if you mean it. Say, what's the matter, Pops? Did you know we're going on the road, and me and the band? No, no, I didn't. How long will you be gone? We figured to stay there, Rick. New York. For good, maybe. Hey, swell. I'll go with you. No. Why not? Because you've got to be thinking about what you're going to do. Oh, going to do? I'm going to be a trumpet man like you. Get me a job with a good band. You think and, that's and... all there is to it? Well, you taught me to play a pretty good trumpet, didn't you? You play fine trumpet. Well, then. What's it worth, Rick? What have I got after 20 years of it? Wife? Kids? Money in the bank? No. Why, you got the best band in the country. Look, boy, you got music in you, in your heart, in your head. But there are very few people who'll ever know what you're trying to say or what you're trying to do. But who cares? I don't play for people. I play for myself. A man's got a lot of living to do in this world. But you, you're kind of locked up inside of yourself. You're like a bird trying to fly on one wing. But you'll stay for a while. Then you're going to fall. Now, wait a minute. You've got no right to... to... Oh, I... I'm sorry, Pops. Sure. I gotta go, boy. I just come to say goodbye. Uh, I'm gonna miss you. Me too. Oh, oh, here I... I almost forgot. It's a two-bit one. Well, thank you, Mr. Martin. Take care of yourself. his first job with a name band, Jack Chandler and his collegians. That was where I first met him. We were booked near Los Angeles, a big barn of a dance hall on a pier over the ocean. I I guess I'm a little early for rehearsal, huh? A little. The others will be coming along. Here, give me your suitcase. Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> hey, what, what do you got in here? Hmm? Scrap iron? <laughs> oh, that's my record collection. Mostly art hazard. I got about every record he's made, I guess. Hazard, huh? Yeah. He taught me to play. Oh, uh, my name's Martin. Rick Martin. Call me Smoke. Piano player. Glad to know you. Uh, say, uh, you know Mr. Hazard? I met him. Boy, he's the greatest trumpet player in the world. Yeah. Looks like we'll be getting to work. All right, boys, let's get set up. We got a lot to do. Oh, Joe, would you mind handing out these arrangements? That's Joe Jordan, vocal. Oh, yeah. I, I recognize her. He's good. Uh, this Rick Martin, fellas. Oh, hi. Sorry, Martin. Hi. I should introduce hi. you around, but I guess we can do that after rehearsal. Oh, that's okay, Mr. Chandler. Now, let's get with it, boys. We open Saturday night. Just remember, we're a dance orchestra. No blues or jive. The public likes rhythm, and that's what we're going to give them. Now, let's get started. We'll take Joe's vocal first. All right, boys. A one, two... Martin, can't you read music? Well, uh, sure, but uh, I, uh, I mean, you want every number played just the way it's written? That's exactly what I want. What do you think I bought these arrangements for? Well, I was just asking. Well, now you know. I bought the arrangements. All right, we'll take it from where it got torn. Let's have a pickup on the piano. Rick, the 
didn't leave when rehearsal was over. He wandered into a storeroom and started to play. Only this was his kind of music. No, no. Don't stop. Hey, that's good. Well, thanks. You must like it here to stay so late. Well, it's a good place to play, Miss Jordan. Nobody around to tell me to shut up. I, well, I'm, I'm sorry about that fix-up before in my number. Oh, that's all right. I, I didn't have any business butting in like that, only it, it seemed kind of right, you know? Oh, incidentally, uh, you're about the best I've heard. Well, thanks. You know, there's a man who has a style very much like yours, Art Hazard. Oh, Art Hazard. You know him? Since I was a kid, he taught me to play. Oh. Yeah, I guess it's his fault I switched to trumpet. You know, I always liked the piano before, but a uh, trumpet, I don't know. Maybe it's because it's so close to you. Like it's part of you. The music doesn't have so far to go. Hey, how about it? I've got to lock up. Sorry, Mac. Guess I was wrong. There's always somebody in the next room to tell me to shut up. Well, good night, Rick. Hmm? Oh, uh, uh, good night, Miss Jordan. He'd see Joe every night, of course, when we were working, but never alone. That is, not until a couple of weeks later. We were through playing, and Rick went out to the boardwalk. She saw him sitting there, watching the waves come in. Anything wrong, Rick? Hmm? Oh, hello. Uh, no, no, nothing's wrong. Aren't you going to the party? Uh, party? Mm, Jack's buying drinks and sandwiches for all the boys. Uh, no, I... Well, I guess I'm not much for parties. <laughs> you know, you you could leave that trumpet in your locker. Yeah, I, I, I guess it must look kind of foolish, but I... Well, I just got so used to carrying it around. Now, the way you baby that thing, you think it was alive. Well, it's pretty good company. Whatever you tell it to do, it does. Only better than you told it. Kind of sold on, aren't you? Well, you gotta be sold. You got no business playing the kind of music I want to play. You gotta love it. You know, you just can't like it and understand it the way the long-haired boys understand their music. You can't write it down and keep it. You can only hear it right while you're playing it and you feel it. Yeah, someday, when I'm really good, I'm going to do things with this trumpet nobody's ever thought of doing. You know, I'm going to hit a note that nobody ever heard before. Well, you got to have some other interest or you go off your rocker. Huh? <laughs> you need a hobby, like uh, like collecting stamps or, or a dog or... Uh, how about a girl? Now, nah, don't pick on me, Rick. You're a married man. But married? You're married to that trumpet. Oh, <laughs> Certainly wouldn't want to come between you. Well, I, uh, uh, well, I suppose you want to get to Chandler's party. Well, maybe, maybe I'd rather just sit here and, uh, and breathe some fresh air. Okay. This is nice, Rick. Mm, nice. Chandler wouldn't like it, would he? No. No, I, I guess he wouldn't. Chandler didn't like it. He didn't like the way Joe looked at Rick or how come she suddenly was busy whenever Chandler wanted a date. But nothing much happened. Just went along like that until one night at the dance hall during one of those ten-minute intermissions. Hey, Smoke. Yeah? Smoke, come here, listen. How about playing something our way, huh? You, me, and a couple of the boys. Oh, are you kidding? Come on, let's have a little change of pace. Just one number during the intermission. Well, I've been fired hey, before. Hey, Frank, Ralph. Come here. We'll need you, too. Chandler won't like this. Listen, we'll be through before he gets back. You're going to play a little jazz, huh? Could be. Got any ideas, Rick? Say, yeah. Uh, oh, how about get happy? Okay, but I ain't. Take it first, Smoke. Let's see what happens. <laughs> it wasn't bad. And the funny part was the way the people liked it. Now, they started crowding around us and really lapping it up. Then Chandler came back. What's going on here? Okay, okay. Okay, Mr. Chandler. You don't have to say it. Well, it's been nice, fellas. Thanks very much. Uh, see you around, Smoke. You're through, Martin. I had a hunch I was. Oh, uh, you better start watching his second trumpet. He's starting to get a roll. If the rest of you want to keep your job, don't let this happen again. It's open. Joe, come on in. Smoke told me where you were living. I'm just checking out. Oh, Rick, please. I've talked to Jack. Everything's all right. I know he'll take you back if you'll just ask. Mm, if, if I'm a good boy, you mean? Yes. Yeah. Oh, all right. He, he doesn't like you. 
But he knows you're the best lead man in the band. No more, Joe. Thanks, but I just couldn't take it. What made you do it? You knew you'd get fired. <laughs> I had to. Was it that much fun? I guess so. What's the matter, Rick? Why do you have to live out in left field all the time? <laughs> I don't know. I, if you keep I, on like this, you'll be living in joints and working in dives look, all your look, life. Joe, Joe, you, you, you like what you're doing, and you've got a good job, and you're going to go places, but... I don't know where I'm going. Well, like you said, some dive, I guess, but if, if you... All right, all right, Rick. You made your point. Oh, thanks a lot anyway. Forget it. Can I lend you some money? Money? Well, I wouldn't know what to do with it. <laughs> so long, Joe. So long, Rick. Young man with a horn. Crazy young man with a horn. Now, our producer, Mr. William Keeley. Act two of Young Man with a Horn, starring Kirk Douglas as Rick Martin, Joe Stafford as Joe Jordan, and Patrice Wymore as Amy. For two years, Rick wandered around the country. Oh, he could have had all sorts of jobs, but the only kind of music he'd play was his own kind, and... Not many people wanted to pay for it. But all the time, he was working his way closer. And... Well, that's it, Rick. Oh. Thanks for waiting. Say, I'm impressed, Joe. You're better than ever. You, you look... Fine, Rick. Ah, uh, sure. You gonna take me out and buy me a sandwich? Gee, uh, I'd sure like to, but I'm anxious to find Art Hazard. You happen to know where he's playing? Sure, sure. In, in Greenwich Village. Oh. A place called Galbus. Uh-huh. He, um, he doesn't play the way he used to, Rick. Oh? He's been quite sick. Uh, oh, but you... he's better now. You mind if I go with you? Well, that'd be swell. Well, just give me time to change. I'll be with you in five minutes. Right. Rick, Rick Martin. Hiya, really Mr. Hazard. <laughs> when I saw you walk in, I just couldn't believe it. It's been a long time. Oh, oh, this is for you. Brought it all the way from Wheeling, West Virginia. It's a two-bit one. <laughs> <laughs> Shut me up if it is. Hello, Art. Hello, Miss Joe. Say, I've been hearing some things about you, Rick, here and there. Yeah. I hear you're pretty good now. Well, I haven't got a role, that's for sure. I'd like to hear you, Rick. Oh, sure, sometime. Now, oh, now, Rick, please. Oh, no. You remember the boys in the band? Uh, Back this gentleman up, please, will you, boys? Hiya, fellas. Uh, What's it going to be, Mr. Martin? Well, uh, uh, I'll think of something, but you guys will have to carry me. Just just the chorus, huh? Go right ahead, Mr. Martin. We'll follow. That was Rick Martin. I've known him from the time he was a little boy. I taught him how to hold that trumpet, but I didn't teach him how to play it, not the way he does. That's something you just can't learn. You've got to have it. That same week, Rick got a job of the best orchestra in town, Phil Morrison's at the Netherlands Roof. Rick never knew it, but he got the job because Joe Jordan had spoken to Morrison about him. 
Six months later, Rick was Morrison's biggest attraction. Very good. I just wanted to tell you, Rick, you were great tonight. Well, thanks a lot, Mr. Morrison. Now, tell me something. Why do you go to Galvez all the time? Don't you get enough trumpet playing here? Well, not my kind of trumpet playing, no. Well, I pay you good money, don't I? At Galvez, you play for free. Just so old man Hazard keeps his job. Now, that uh, uh, Mr. Be Hazard's a friend of mine. <laughs> okay, forget it. But you're not doing yourself any good staying up all night playing your head off. Thanks for the tip, Mr. Morrison. Just take it easy, Rick. Yeah, almost every night Rick would wind up at Galvers. That was the one place Joe could be sure of meeting him. And one time, Joe brought along a friend. And here he is, Amy. He's that crazy musician I told you about. <laughs> Rick, this is Amy North. Hello. It isn't there anymore, is it? Uh, I beg your pardon? The expression on your face. Oh. A moment ago when you were playing that trumpet, you were exalted. Sure of yourself. Now you've undergone a rather startling transition. Uh, well, uh... People I... try to find security in a lot of strange ways. You seem to have solved your problems. Huh? At least for your playing that trumpet. I should have warned you about Amy. She always likes to analyze everything. She's starting to be a doctor, Rick. A psychiatrist. Huh? Well... Holy smoke. Sorry, but you'll both have to excuse me. I promised Mr. Galba I'd sing a number. Knock him dead, Joe. Tell me about jazz, Mr. Martin. Huh? Do you think it's purely African? I don't know. I, I don't do much thinking about it. I, I just like to play it. Can I buy you a drink? Uh, no, thanks. You don't like me, do you? I think you're very charming, Miss North. You can call me Amy. I bet I could. But only if I wanted you to. I may be wrong. Joe's interesting, isn't she? So simple, uncomplicated. Uh, they don't come any better. It must be wonderful to get up in the morning and know just what door you're going to walk through. She's so terribly normal. Uh, she's a good singer, too. Yes. I'm yes, isn't she? So how can I tell? All of my hats are unsightly. All of my shoes are a crime. Joe had to leave early, a recording the next morning. And when Galvis closed that night, it was Rick who took Amy home. Hey, this is quite a deal you got here. It's expensive, but cozy. Tell me something. Hmm? How long have you been playing the trumpet? Since I was a kid. Ever want to do anything else? Nope. Because even then, you knew you played better than anyone else. That's it, isn't it? Well, uh, I had hopes, I guess. Me? I've been an intellectual mountain goat, leaping from crag to crag, trying everything. First, I wanted to be a writer. Then I studied interior decorating. I even tried singing in one of those smart bars. I was bad in all of them. Yeah. And now you're going to get into people's heads and find out what makes them tick? Yes. Please don't be angry. I've suddenly realized how late it is. I have a class in the morning at ten. Oh, uh, well, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Sure, sure. You will call me. Uh, you won't mind? We should get along beautifully, Richard. We're so different. Good night. Well, it was just about then that Rick sent for me. He got me a job in Morrison's band. He was going to meet me at Grand Central. <laughs> Only he didn't show up. But Joe was there, and she took me to Galba's place. He'll be here, Smoke. I'm, I'm sure he'll be here. Well, anyway, it's been wonderful seeing you, Joe. I've been hearing your records all over the country. I'm real proud of you. Thanks. <laughs> Rick's been doing all right, too, you know. Ah, uh, we always knew he'd hit it. Yeah, it's going to be like old times, the three of us together. Sure. Just like old times. You know, I think we've been stood up. Oh, stop worrying. That mother instinct comes out in me at the most unlikely times. Well, he said he'd meet us here, didn't he? He won't be here, Smoke. He used to come here every night, for Mr. Hazard's sake. But not anymore. He's changed. Oh? Who's the girl, Joe? You're real smart, aren't you? She's a friend of mine. I introduced them. Well, come on. Let's find your hotel. Sure, Joe knew where he was. With Amy. Amy wanted to see where Rick lived. What kind of a place a trumpet player called home. Well, this is it. I told you you wouldn't like it. I think it's lovely. It doesn't pretend to be anything but what it is. Mm. You mean it's crummy. And all those records. 
Collector's items? I don't know. I guess some of them are pretty scarce. I've had them a long time. I thought you told me you never wanted to own anything. That the more you own, the more you worry. Oh, sure, but this is different. These records, well, well they're music. They're... Say, Amy, uh, what's going to happen? I, I mean, when you get to be a doctor, why do you want to be a doctor? Maybe because my father was a doctor. Well, that makes sense, I guess. No, it doesn't. You see, I have no use for my father. Now, my mother, that was something else again. Something pretty wonderful. She died of a brain tumor at the age of 36. Gee, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Thanks. Thanks, you're very kind. Anyway, my father still pays the bills. I don't see him any oftener than I have to. He married again. What he got served him right. Uh, would you... Uh, would you like a drink or something? No. No, I'd better go. Oh, don't say that. I've got to study. No, please. Because uh, I'm... Well, besides, I... Uh, no, no, don't. Amy. Uh, what is it, Amy? Have I? You, have I? You've waited a long time to kiss me, Richard. But what's wrong? Don't. What's wrong? It's not you. Well, you're talking in riddles again. I don't get you. I didn't expect you to. Look, is this some of that stuff you learned at college? What am I, some kind of an experiment? Keep away, Richard. This is my first and last warning. You think you're in love with me? Well, don't. Don't take any chances with me. Only people who respect themselves can ever really love fully and freely. I don't happen to respect myself. You sound like something out of a book. I only know what I feel. You're lucky. Now, please take me home. Now, wait a minute. Let's get something straight first. The people I know either like you or they don't. They don't act one way and then change completely the next minute. Rather dull, aren't they? Well, at least you know where you stand with them. You know, I thought you were something wonderful, Amy. Something fine and... Well, you're acting like a cheap... Oh, don't stop now, Richard. You're just beginning to be interesting. You said you wanted to go home. Aren't you taking me? There's a taxi stand down at the corner. Thanks. Call me sometime, Richard. Call you what? Rick was full of apologies when we met the next day. He couldn't do enough for me with Phil Morrison and the guys in the band, but he had very little to say about Amy. The next Sunday, Joe went over to Rick's apartment. Oh, I'm sure glad to see you. Well, I just thought I'd... What's going on here? Huh? You moving? Well, uh, yeah. Well, I, I... can't say I blame you, but I'm quite surprised. It's been a long time, Rick. Well, I, I've been pretty busy, Joe. I've been worried about you down at Galbus. Oh, say, how's Mr. Hazard? About the same. He gets by. Yeah. See, the first chance I get, I, I'm going Rick. to... Rick. Rick, you've been seeing a lot of Amy, haven't you? Well, I guess so. You see, Joe... If, I... if I could only make you believe that I didn't come here because I'm hurt or, or jealous or... Oh, Rick, it... Rick, listen. I, I know Amy so much better than you do. She's a strange girl, and you've never known anyone like her before. I can understand all that. Yeah, but, but inside, way inside, she's all mixed up. But, Joe... She's, she's wrong for you, Rick. She'll hurt you. Exactly what I told him myself. Amy... But he wouldn't take no for an answer. Joe, Joe, you didn't give me a chance to tell you. Amy and I got married yesterday. Thanks for your good wishes. I don't suppose you'll ever forget what I've said. But please try. Yeah, they've got married. And they moved over to Amy's place. Every night she'd be at the Netherlands roof while Rick was playing and... Then they'd go out on the town till daylight. But as much as they were together, they never got to know each other. And that's it, Richard. I've made up my mind. I'm going back to medical school. What? Amy, what's wrong? Gee, if I've done something to upset you, I... <laughs> It's really funny. Whenever I make a decision you can't understand, you always blame yourself. This has nothing to do with you. It's me. Well, what does that mean? I told you, I want to get my degree. You're not happy? Of course I'm happy. But, but if you go back and I work all night, we'll never see each other. It will only be for a few months. But you don't really want to be a doctor. Besides, we're married now. 
I want exactly what you want. The only difference is you have it. I... I've simply got to amount to something. I've got to stay with it this time. Yeah, I... Oh, I guess you do. So Amy went back to college. For weeks, they hardly even saw each other. Sooner or later, something had to give. Amy, Amy, wait a minute. Why aren't you asleep? It's only 7.30. I know what time it is. I wanted to talk to you before you got out. I can't, Richard. I'm late as it is. Besides, talk is vastly overrated. It's actions that count. I know it is. Don't think I haven't wanted to knock some sense into you before this. What made you stop? I don't know. Probably because I'm still in love with you. That's very sweet. My advice is a double bromo self. Look, I've got to talk to you, Amy. We've got to get things straight. Now, stop being silly and hand me my gloves. This is I no won't time stand to... it any longer. Well? Look, I'll come home tonight as soon as I can. Let's have supper together and talk this thing out. Find out where we stand. Very well, Richard. Let's do that. We were through work at the Netherlands Roof at 1 o'clock, and that night a bunch of us were going down to Galba's place and see Art Hazard. We just smoke him in a hurry. But we can all go down to Galba's together, can't we? I'm not going there. Not tonight. We haven't been down there for weeks. I know, I know. Art keeps asking about you, Rick. How is he? You know how he is. He's liable to lose the oh, spot. Yeah, look, say hello for me, Smoke. Tell him I... Uh, well, look, I, I just can't make it tonight. No, he couldn't. He had a date with Amy. With his wife. Only when Rick got home, Amy wasn't there. We'll continue with Young Man with a Horn in a few moments. The curtain rises on Act Three of Young Man with a Horn. Starring Kirk Douglas as Rick Martin, Patrice Wymore as Amy, and Joe Stafford as Joe Jordan. Amy never showed up that night, and in the morning, Rick left the house and started drinking his way downtown. One bar to another. He wound up in the village, not far from Galba's place. Hello, Rick. Huh? I thought I saw you going in here. Hello, Mr. Hess. Been a long time, Rick. A long time. Yeah, yeah I, I, I've been busy. Sure, I, I know. Listen, I worked for Morrison. I didn't sign a contract with Gallup. Of course not. Look, a man's got to live his own life. He's got to live it his own way. He's got to take the breaks the way they come. That's right, boy. Yeah, yeah, I know what you think. All right, we've been friends. You did a lot for me. I tried to pay you back, but... Well, if you're through, you're through. There's nothing I can do about it. I can't hold you up forever. I know. The trumpet man, he, yeah. he plays his little tune, and then he's done. I didn't come here to ask for anything, but people talk. I heard you in some kind of trouble. Thought maybe I could help you. Look, I don't need any help. Why does everybody have to stick his two cents worth into my life, telling me what to do, how to live? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sick and tired of it. You're right. Yeah. People get old, they... They see things wrong, mostly. A man's got to live his own life. Just just like you said. I'd have felt the same way about it when I was your age. Everything's going to turn out all right. Don't let anybody worry you. Just take care of yourself. I saw Rick that night, the Netherlands roof and the dressing room, just before the band was due to go on. That's uh, tough about Art Hazard, huh, Rick? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I saw him this morning. Think he's got much of a chance? What are you talking about? You don't know, do you? Well, know what? Art's been hurt. What? He was crossing the street. A truck hit him. Where is he? Bellevue Hospital. Pretty bad, I guess. I tried to reach you, but... Rick, wait a minute. Rick? <laughs> I 
said I'm sorry, but you can't see Mr. Hazard. No visitors. Look, I've got to see him just for a minute. You heard me. No visitors. Listen, I, I know it's against the rules, but I've got to see him. I, I, I've got to tell him something, please, just for a minute. Now, look, a man in his condition can't be... Yes, but... Yes? Very well, doctor. Thank you. Look, all I wanted was just... You're too late. Mr. Hazard is dead. I'm sorry about our date last night. I got tied up, Richard. I couldn't get home. It's all right, Amy. How's school? I didn't tell you, did I? I flunked my finals. I'm sorry. Don't be. Maybe I'll try again. Or maybe I'll go to Europe and study painting. I used to paint when I was a child. Very well, too. You, you look tired. Why don't you go to bed? Yes. Yes, I think I will. Oh, I almost forgot. I'm having some people over for cocktails tomorrow. We'll celebrate my glorious defeat. You'll be there, won't you? I want to show off my wonderful husband. <laughs> That's a laugh. Amy, why did you ever marry me? Oh, I think it was a wonderful experience for both of us. <laughs> Besides, how do you know about anything until you try it? I didn't mean to hurt you, Richard. It's only that I'm jealous. Jealous? I'd give anything to have what you've got. To be able to do one thing really well and to know that it's worth something. Maybe that's why I really married you. I thought that some of it would rub off on me. But it hasn't. Oh, Amy, I'm sorry. I... Get away. Don't you dare pity me. Don't you dare. <laughs> They buried Art Hazard the following afternoon. There was a service in a little Negro church in Harlem. Well, I felt kind of funny at first, being the only white man there, but I hadn't seen Rick come in. The minister was talking. And so we are gathered here, not only to pay homage to a great musician, but to remind ourselves of the goodness and the soul of this man, Art Hazard. And to meditate upon the unselfish spirit of generosity, which was his. He was truly a man's friend. And now a hymn will be given by his friends. And while they were playing, a man walked up the aisle. Some looked at his face and saw sorrow and tears. Others saw guilt and a great shame. And maybe some saw gratitude and love. On the casket was a trumpet, Art Hazard's trumpet. Rick took the trumpet and played it. I think that whatever had been left unspoken and unsaid somehow now was said, understood between them. cocktail party was over, but she was there waiting for him. How nice of you to show up, Richard, when everyone's gone. Didn't you get my note? It's in the fire. What did you do for him? He's dead, isn't he? So there's one less trumpet player, so what? You're drunk, Amy, and you're sick. Well, maybe a trumpet player isn't much to be, but it's what Art Hazard was, and that's what I am. You and the cheap brass. You and your alter ego. Whatever it is, it's part of me. It's the best part. You almost made me forget that. I'm fed up with you. I'm sick of you trying to touch me. I'm sick of the sound of brass. Get out and take your precious records with you. Pick up the pieces and get out of here. I'm dirty. What a dope I was. I thought you had class. Like a real high note you hit once in a lifetime. I hate you. You've always hated me. You said you wanted experiences, Amy. Well, here's a new one for you. I'm leaving you for good. I'd like to kill you. 
You almost did. You're a sick girl, Amy. You better see a doctor. Nobody saw Rick for the next three days. Then he showed up at my place. He was sober now, but there must have been some bender he'd been on. Well, aren't you going to ask me any questions? Well, I've heard a few rumors, Rick. If there's anything oh, you want to tell me... Uh, give me a drink, Smoke, will you? Uh, it doesn't take long to tell. Amy and I... Well, we're through. Oh, I just saw Morrison. I told him to look for a new trumpet man. Oh, now look, pal, just because you from and Amy... now on, I'm playing it my way. I'm not going to be tied down to anybody or anything. You want company? <laughs> you got a good job, Smoke. You keep it, die rich. I don't care if I never get another cent out of it. Hey, hmm? hey, Smoke, what? listen. How about getting together tonight with some of the guys, huh? It's huh? Sunday, you're not working. You know, go over to one of the Jersey joints, a real jam set. Hey, huh? hey, Joe's recording tonight, Rick, remember? Joe. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot. She thinks we're good. She's counting on us to be with the band. Oh, we can go over to Jersey afterwards. Yeah, sure we can. Hey, hey, Smoke, remember the way we used to knock out those licks? Oh. Just you and me and those guys who... And Art has it. You know, you never knew Art when he was really... When he was... Rick. Uh, Rick, what is it? You sick? No, I... I gee, I don't know. I, I'm just so dizzy all of a sudden. I say, wait, 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 where's my trumpet? Right in your hand? Yeah, I... Oh, I, no, I'm okay. Oh, no, no more of that stuff. Oh, you're right. You, gee, you, you, you kind of lose track how much you drink when you... Hey, you, you know, uh, you really scared me there for me. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I got a great idea. Huh? You know what we ought to do? What do you say we make our own records? Make them the way we want them. <laughs> yeah, sure. Or we could make records that split them wide open. Make them <laughs> sit up and reap... Yeah, we could do some of the old ones that Art used to do. Like Dinah. Smoke. Twelve. Smoke, they won't buy them. Who won't buy them? People. Look, you you know who buys records? High school girls. You know why? To learn the words. Oh, now, wait a minute. Look, Smoke, nobody really knows what we're doing except us. Oh. The guys that do it. They don't hear us. They just hear the words. Well, you and I could drop dead tomorrow and nobody know the difference. Uh, Hmm. Well, I... Thought I had something. You okay now, Rick? Sure. Sure you are. You're gonna stay okay. You're my pal, Smoke. You're the only one left who cares what happens to me. You're at a recording session with Joe. She was halfway through the number when it happened... Rick reached for a note, only it wasn't there. Then he started to go wild. That's all, boys. Cut! Cut, I said that's all, Martin. Cut! Sorry, Miss Jordan. Rick, Rick, what is it? It's all right, Rick. They've all gone. It's not the end of the world. Look, all you need some sleep. It was wonderful up to there. We'll get it right. They'll be back in a few minutes and we'll do it again. Now, here, take your trumpet. I don't want it. I don't want to ever see it again. Give it away. Give it to some kid who wants to play an instrument. Only tell him not to fall in love with it. <laughs> That's what you told me once, wasn't it, Joe? What's wrong, Rick? What is it? You know, the... They only buy records to learn the words. Nobody cares about the music. What are you trying to do, Rick? Kill yourself? Because you tried for a note that doesn't exist? That's what you've done all your life. What do you think a trumpet will do? That that note you were going for. That, that thing you were trying for. There's no such thing, Rick. Not on a trumpet. <laughs> Rick really went to pieces after that. You see, the only thing in the whole world he felt safe with was his trumpet. And when that let him down, well, he just couldn't take it. He dropped out of sight. For weeks, no one knew where he was. Half the time, I doubt if Rick knew himself. 
And one day, I get a phone call, a sanatorium for alcoholics. He was brought here the night before last. A taxi driver found him lying in the street. Fortunately, I found your phone number in his coat pocket. Well, why'd you wait till now? Well, we assumed Mr. Martin was an alcoholic. We're not expected to handle medical cases. I'm afraid he has pneumonia. Well, then why isn't he in the hospital? Well, we had no authorization. All right, you got it now. Now, get an ambulance. Oh, and call these telephone numbers. Tell them to get here right away. Uh, this name, Mrs. Martin, his wife? Yes. And the other one? She's not his wife. I'll go inside and stay with him. Rick? Oh, you're going to be all right. Smoker. He didn't smoke. What happened? I... I must have got lost or something. I'm getting you out of here, Rick. They can take better care of you in a regular hospital. I don't feel good, Smoke. I'm sick. I'm sick. Hello? Yes, Rick? Come in, Joe. The ambulance ought to be here in a minute. How is he? I'm not Gee. sure. Delirious. Gee, Smoke. He's talking to we himself. Can play some Rick? of the old ones, huh? Rick? The can you hear me? The good ones we used to play. Joe, Rick. Yeah, Joe's smoke, here. Me and Art. We can play for ourselves. We're going to be all right, Rick. We'll have a lot of dates to play. If they want words, they don't have to listen to us. We got no words. We can't say what we mean. We just got to feel it. We just... Joe. Where's Joe? I want Joe. I want her to listen. I'm here, Rick. I'm here. She said there was no such note. Listen to it, Smoke. She said I was trying for something that didn't exist. Listen to it. Rick, please. Joe was wrong, Smoke. She was wrong. Sure, Rick, sure. You can hear it, can't you? That note she said I'd never find. Listen to it, Smoke. It's clean. It's sweet. Gee, that's a good note. You see, Rick was a pretty hard guy to understand. For a long time, he didn't understand himself. But the desire to live is a great teacher, and I think it taught Rick a lot of things. He learned that, well, that you can't say everything through the end of a trumpet, that a man doesn't destroy himself because he can't hit some high note that he dreamed up. Maybe that's why Rick went on to be a success as a human being first, and an artist second. <laughs> Just a song. And what an artist. But as soon as a hint is made, when the music swells, I'm touching you. stars will return. <laughs> now, here's Mr. Keeley with our star. And here they are to take their first curtain calls on the Lux Radio Theater. Kurt Douglas, Patrice Wymore, Joe Stafford. <laughs> Joe, how do you think you'd like being a dramatic actress all the time? Be all right up to a point. And what, uh, just what is that point, Joe? Where the shrimp boats are coming to <laughs> dance tonight. Ah, but Joe can be a dramatic actress and still sing and dance. Look at Patrice here. That's what I do in my latest picture for Warner Brothers called She's Working Her Way Through College. 
In another one I just finished, I played opposite Kirk Douglas. That's right, the big trees, and I also have another leading lady in the picture doing a swell job, Eve Miller. Yes, and if I remember correctly, Eve gets you instead of Patrice. Oh, poor Pat. (laughs) (laughs) I think I'll stick to my shrimp boats. You know, Joe, you've certainly done a great deal for the fish industry. They ought to call you Miss Seafood Mama of 1952. call her a Lutz girl, which I know she is. And you know, Patrice, a few weeks ago, Errol Flynn told us you were devoted to Lux Toilet Soap. That's right, Bill. And that's why I'm here. I would never have allowed Errol to appear if I'd only known you were going to pay him just money. So I'm here for the Lux Soap. <laughs> well, we'll see that both you and Joe have an extra supply. Thanks, Bill. I think Lux Soap is a wonderful complexion care. Well, this is no place for a trumpet player, so... <laughs> How about telling us what's for next week, Bill? Well, it's an inspiring story of a champion, Ben Hogan. Which 20th Century Fox has turned into the exciting screenplay, Follow the Sun. And as our stars, we will have Ann Baxter in her original role and Gary Merrill. It was certainly a wonderful story, Bill. Good night. Good night, all. Good night. It was a musical treat. Here's new proof that Corodent toothpaste gives you a clean, fresh mouth all day long. The January Reader's Digest presents the facts, tells why Corodent, the amazing new toothpaste, with magic chlorophyll, gives you the most effective deodorizing action ever discovered. Reader's Digest says about Corodent, quote, Tests indicate that it is 50% more effective against mouth odors than a toothpaste without chlorophyll. Yes, by brushing your teeth with Corodent regularly, preferably after meals, you can have a clean, fresh mouth, not just for minutes, but all day long. Because Corodent contains chlorophyll, nature's greatest purifier. Corodent fights tooth decay. Common gum troubles, too. Corodent gives you complete mouth care in a single product. Buy a tube and see for yourself why Corodent, the chlorophyll dentifrice, is winning friends faster than any other toothpaste in America. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening. When the Lux Radio Theater presents Ann Baxter and Gary Merrill in Follow the Sun. This is William Keeley saying goodnight to you from Hollywood. And now, attention, thrifty shoppers. Here's news of a free Lux coupon coming to your door. Yes, watch for a coupon that tells you how to get a regular size Lux toilet soap free of extra cost. Take it to your grocers. Try this famous beauty soap that Hollywood stars recommend. You'll see it's easy to be Lux lovely. So don't miss this generous offer. Take your free Lux coupon to your grocers right away. Heard in our cast tonight were Paul Fries as Smoke, Earl Smith as Art Hazard, and Dan Riss as Chandler. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was directed by Rudy Schrager. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear Follow the Sun, starring Ann Baxter and Gary Merrill.